preview of the skirmish mode for Imperial Assault, and I'm going to be showing you basically how to set it up, how to play, uh, and what skirmish is all about. So if you've got Imperial Assault and haven't done skirmish yet, or if you're thinking about getting Imperial Assault, this is a preview for the skirmish mode that's basically a one-on-one, -on -one, just kind of like a death match, just a fight uh, that doesn't require a whole commitment to an entire campaign. And the best part is you can play this with just the base set and another person. Uh, although it's better if each person has their own game because then you can design your build. But there's enough stuff involved in the game that you can do your own, um, you know, your own two-player game with just one game. So uh, here it goes. So um, you know, setting up a map is one of the first things you need to do. And I'm going off of the. I'm going to be basically doing the uh, first scenario. Get to the ship here on the back of the skirmish guide. <clears throat> Now, if you look here at the bottom, it's going to tell you all the tiles you need. And these are all numbered numerically, so it makes it pretty easy. Because right here, I've got like 1 through 11, then uh, 12 through like 19 in here. And then like the next 9 in this section, and the next 9 in this section. So I have them all sorted numerically, so it makes it pretty easy. So I just did like the first half, I'm up to 16, and now I need 20. And I know 20 is in here. So... Uh, there's 20, and uh, I need 21, there's my 339s, and I just need two more 36s, and they're flat on one side, there's 30, I just need one more, there it is. Okay, so now i got all my pieces, put all the smalls on one side, on that side, all the bigs there, put the rest of this away. finish building this and then we'll talk about upgrade card. So I've got my board set up now. Uh, I've got all my tokens on here and the reason I did this first as my intro is just because this is the most time consuming thing and I wanted to have it set up before I talk about all the rest of the stuff that goes on in a skirmish. But now that that's done, um, and for the record I really wish FFG would just release like a play mat that had these pre-printed. This would be actually be a great idea to just get this scanned and print out your own poster. So you don't have to rebuild all this every time. It takes a little bit of time. So <clears throat> one of the first things I want to talk about is your scenario cards. You should have little cards that have this on the back. And, uh, and these basically tell you what the objectives do. I know my first time playing a, scenario, a skirmish, uh, we weren't sure exactly what the objectives did. And we ended up just killing each other. Which is fine, because as soon as you lose all your pieces, you lose regardless of victory points. So you can, you know, you can always just focus on killing somebody else, but you have to get the, the, the card that goes along. And we're doing scenario A on the back of the skirmish guide, so let's get to the ship. Here's the card that goes along with that. You should have six of these now, because two come with the base game, two come with Luke Skywalker, and two come with Darth Vader. <clears throat> so they're going to explain, you know, one of them is, some of them you might have to pick up a crate and get, take it back to your, your area and it score victory points at the end. But this one, there's a T-16 Skyhopper here. And we want to kind of control it. Um, each part, each part, part that we have control over, which means we're adjacent. So if he's here, he would control both of these, score two victory points at the end of each turn for each one that I control. And control means that it's the, I have a, I'm next to it, but the opponent doesn't have anybody next to it contesting it. So it has to be an uncontested um, adjacency, basically. Same thing goes for terminals and, and other things that require control. Um, so basically, the, the turn works like this. Yeah, the start of the game, you determine initiative based on victory or based on squad points. Um, whoever has less will get get initi the initiative token. That means they can activate first. And you can go back and forth, um, and uh, you know, and then you'll start. You take your turn. You draw three command cards, and then you can play those at any time. Um, let's talk about actual cards. I want to look at the, the cards here. Um, so here I've got Jin. Now, you, if you played the, the campaign, you'll recognize she's one of the main characters from the campaign. Up here, this is how her cost. She, she costs five of your 40 available points. Um, you know, and like compare her to like Luke Skywalker, who costs 10. He's a you know, really awesome guy, so he costs 10. Uh, and, and, and each of the characters that in the campaign have a card represented here, then these are kind of like the Imperial versions. The Imperial cards call uh, serve double duty, because you use those in the campaign as well as the skirmish. Uh, but you know, in skirmish, uh, unlike the campaign, you know you're kind of treated all like imperial type characters, and that you can only attack once per turn, 
unless like you have this guy, uh, Fen, he's got assault so he can perform multiple attacks each activation. Um, so he's a special character and it'll say that, but uh, unless it otherwise says so, you can only perform one attack. Um, now, you now look at like Lucas Luke Skywalker for example. Um, you know he's got he's got a, ra a blaster attack, so he's got ranged, but he also has an ability called saber strike, and he can perform melee attack using a basically a lightsaber and it gains pierce three. Um, it says an attack, so this actually would count as your attack. So you can't like attack and then as an action also do that. Um, there are certain actions that will do damage that don't say attack. So Darth Vader is a perfect example for this. Um, you know he's got his normal attack. Or you can have do brutality, which is an ability that has him perform two attacks. Um, now you couldn't attack and then do brutality um, because it says perform attack. But you could attack and then do force choke, which is choose a hostile figure and they just suffer damage. So being that that doesn't say the word attack, it counts as so you could do brutality two attacks and then force choke. So Vader is one of the most heaviest damage dealing guys, but he also costs eighteen. So you want to build. You know, you can have as many guys as you want as long as your total points does not exceed 40. And there are some other cards as well that will do things like Balance of the Force. You can include an initial three points of command uh, cards in your deck. So this one, this costs one for your 40 for your regular cards, but, it, you know, you sacrifice one here to gain three more over here. So these are your command cards. Now, in addition to having your regular cards, your deployment cards, you have command cards. You have to have 15 of these in your deck, right? Make a command deck of 15 cards, um, and they each have a point value here at the bottom. This one is zero. There's a whole lot that are zero, but some of them are going to be one, some of them are going to be two, and some of them are going to be three. Here's a two, uh, here's a three, right? The other thing you want to look at is the limit. See, a lot of them have a little dot, and that means you can only have one of them in your deck. One, one, most are limited. This one is limited of two, but most cards are, are limited of only one, and it's easy to miss that. The other thing you're looking at is who can who can use certain cards. Like this card is limited to Jin, Jin Oden. She's the only one that you could play this on. Um, this one says any figure. And some don't even target a figure. Some target like, you know, all of your figures. Uh, and they won't even say anything. You just have to kind of read them. Like this one is only for Luke Skywalker. This one affects all of your troopers, so it doesn't even it doesn't even list a specific type because it's more of like a, a global kind of a buff. So, and, and they, they all basically say when you can use them. Some will be used at the start of the turn, some will be used when you're attacking, some will be used when you're defending, so on. And, and, and there's no limit. There's no limit to how many, but there, you're limited by how many are in your hand that you can play. So if I have five cards in my hand, I can play all of them in one turn if I wanted to, if, as, long as, I'm allowed, as long as the card says that I can. <clears throat> so that's our command deck. We'll shuffle that. The game will start. We'll each draw three, draw three cards. And, uh, you know, that's what I got. And uh, that, that kind of influences where you want to, you know, how you want to, you know, who you want to move first, who you want to activate first. Start of the game, though, whoever gets initiative gets to deploy their stuff. So the Imperial player, or one player will have this corner, one player will have that corner. And that's also shown here in the, uh, in the map. One section will be in blue, one section will be in red. Um, the guy who, whoever wins initiative can choose which side uh, they want, so you can flip the map around or switch seats. And so I'm just going to walk through a typical setup here. We can have move all of his guys together. Okay, so there he's set up, and that's how he's going to go. And then after he goes, then the rebel player gets to take a... Now, I'm using these guys as proxies for the rebel troopers, because I don't... They don't have the miniatures for these out at the time of shooting this video, so... And I don't have any of the old school minis. And so I will set my guys up, and we'll go. Actually, I want them right there. She can go there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the Imperial player activates first. You know, and I'll take you through a sample turn or two. So maybe he'll choose his officer to activate. He taps the card, turns it sideways. Officer, you know, has two actions. You could do movement, and just like the game, you know, you can break up your movement because that just adds movement to a pool, and you can use those whenever. So I can move one or two, do something, and then move the rest. Um, but his first thing, he'll order Vader to get a free move of four. So one, two, three, four. Vader's kind of on point out there. 
And on, then he'll also move. One, two, three, four. Keep in mind, like action symbols, like order that are special, you can't do those more than once per turn, or during, or I should say, once per activation. Um, they're restricted to once per turn. Per turn. Um, the only thing that you can do more than once per turn naturally is movement. Other things, you know, are just restricted once. Certain, I mean, some cards will let you attack more than one in a turn, uh, but the rule of thumb is. Uh, only once per turn for anything except movement. All right, so then, so Imperial Officer has moved, he's activated, now it goes to the Rebel Player. You know, he'll um, activate uh, um, his Rebel Troopers. Okay, so now I have activated a group card, I've got three of them, and I can go one, two, three, four, and then have him attack. Uh, or maybe just two, three, four, have, move, have him move behind there. Now he controls two of these. Right, and according to the scenario, that'll give me some victory points. Or I can take an action, flip it over, make it worth even more. And that's something you'll see on the objectives. Are something you'll read on the card. Um, and in this, in the, for this particular one, as an action, you can flip one of these over to the colored side. And once you do that, it's worth five victory points instead of just two at the end of the round. So, so that's nice. And, and it's important because the winner is the first person to get to forty victory points. So. You know, this could be the not enough to push you over the edge, or especially if somebody's got Vader and they've got, you know, almost half of their entire army point value in one card. He's really hard to kill. So you might not be able to get enough points just off of kills. You may have to go for objectives. Objectives are worth a ton. Um, you know, and then this guy, maybe he's going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, because he wants to control this terminal station, which is, is these terminals, because... If you control a terminal, you get to draw one additional card at the end of the turn. Normally at the end of the turn, you would only draw one card, but if I control that station, now I can draw a second card. You know, But that's not now. That would be at the very end of the, of the whole turn once everybody's activated. It's going to one, two, three, four, and then he'll attack Vader, and he gets uh, a yellow and a blue. So let's see what happens. Boom. He gets... Uh, two hits and three surge. So Vader, however, gets to roll two defense dice and can re-roll one. Um, so he'll cancel a surge when he's got two armor. And so he can put a pierce. He actually does a damage to Vader. Just kind of shoots Vader's cape a little bit, you know. So then I've completed activating all three of my rebel troopers. Damage, you know, then we go back to here. Um, the Royal Guards will activate. One, two, three, four... Five, one, two, three, four, five, um, and he'll swing, you know, attack this guy, red and yellow. Boom! And he, wow, he just rolled five hits, and my trooper doesn't, you know, my trooper's dead. Now this is important, and I'm playing through this whole scenario just to talk about all the different things that come up. When you completely kill one of my cards, you get victory points equal to the point value. However, when it's got a group. Um, you don't get the six victory points for this until you've killed all three of them. So if I still got one guy remaining, you get no victory points at all for that. So that's important to know. And we'll kind of go back and forth, and then, you know, then it goes back to this guy, to me, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And he'll stay there. And then it goes back. And we're kind of, you know, I'm just simulating this real quick. We're moving, moving. Moving the stormtrooper group over here. They're going to try and come in from behind. There's a door on this map, so that will require an action to open. And all that's left is Darth Vader. And then Jin will go one, two, three, four, five. Oh, and she's got a cool ability. So she can discard a command card from my hand when I'm attacking and cause the defender to lose one die from their dice pool. So we'll, we'll do that. Say here, discard a command card. That goes into my discard pile, and boom, and then she rolls, you know what, that four damage, so Vader only gets one. Ooh, so he only rolled one, but well, he gets a re-roll. Oh, so he rolls two, so he takes two damage, not bad. That's one thing I like about her. She's not too expensive, and she can, she's got some great surge abilities too, but it's hard for her to get them, but and she can heal, she's got recover two, she can cleave two, which would have been great there. So, uh, and actually, no, it only does one damage because the guard is going to give Vader one more. So she only does one. She gets one through because Vader's well protected here. But that's it for her. Now she's there. Um, 
Then uh, next is Vader. He's going to attack her right back. He gets two red and a yellow, so this is going to hurt. One, two, three, four, and two surge. She's going to roll. One surge cancel. So he gets one extra surge, and he'll add two more to that. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Does that kill her? Oh, she's got eight health. And then he's going to force choke her, and that's going to kill her. Now, um, force choke is an interesting thing because it also applies a, a, um, a sweat. Now, or no, I'm sorry, this is not descend. It's not called a sweat. It's called a strain. So the strain, we don't actually use strain tokens in Skirmish. So what happens with a strain, a strain is treated as a damage, but you have the option to prevent that damage by taking the top card of your command deck and discarding it to prevent one strain. Now... Obviously, you'll have to do that in some cases if it's going to save somebody's life, but you know, you only have so many cards here. Once they're out, they're gone. Get no more. You know, so you don't want to do that too much. You don't want to have to do that maybe more than once or twice during the whole game because you're going to eventually run out of cards. And you kind of don't want to do that because these cards do really awesome things. So, uh, so that would kill her. Then the Imperial player would immediately get seven victory points because she's worth seven. Um, so it's always a nice idea, too, to try and attack somebody who hasn't activated yet, or somebody who's untapped, if you're a Magic the Gathering player, because then that's one less that they get to attack you back with. So that's always nice. Um, so, you know, that, and, and that's as far as I'll go with this particular game. It's, uh, it's really nice, and uh, the last thing I'll talk about, after this turn was over, after everybody had moved and done their stuff, turn ends, we untap, right? First thing we do is we untap everything, or sometimes there's cards you can play that play at the end of the turn. You would play those first. But then you un untap everything. You will, you know, look at end of turn conditions for victory points. Like here, being that the rebel player controls these two, um, he would score two victory points for each of them because they're not flipped over. It'd be five if they were flipped over. Uh, you then you draw your command cards. You know, the imperial player would get one and then an additional one for controlling a terminal, I would get one and then an additional one for controlling a terminal as well. Um, then the initiative token passes to the other player, and then he gets to activate first. So I kind of like my preference. I like to, I like to go last on the first turn. So this way I get the initiative token and then can attack, you know, first. So I can potentially, like, maybe have Luke Skywalker activate last, have him move up you know, do a saber strike or some cool attack, and then first thing I do, do is activate Luke Skywalker again, and I can attack again with him. And especially if you have, you know, this card, Son of Skywalker, it's really nice to have Luke Skywalker activated already. Then once they boom, once they go, I play this, then untap Luke Skywalker, I get to use him again. So there's a lot of little combos like that and things that you'll you'll see as you're playing the game. But check out these these skirm these upgrade cards. They'll probably make more sense to you once you've played the skirmish once or twice, but they're, they're very cool. It adds a lot of flavor to the game. Um, and, uh, yeah, and that's that's about it. So I might be missing something. I might have uh, rushed through something or not, but I just wanted to give you an overview of how to play the skirmish. Um, I'll probably, I'll, I might get a, a bat rep in here once, or, or once I, you know, get playing more games, but this was kind of a sample demo of how a skirmish game Will unfold so let me know what you think and if you like the video you know subscribe you like it comment all that good stuff you know because it's cool because that's what all the cool people do have a wonderful day mm -hmm.